From a farm in South Dakota, the skies over Europe, at the side of President Kennedy and the United Nations agencies in Rome, George McGovern led a life of deep commitment to purpose, ending hunger in our time. George McGovern was born in 1922 to South Dakota farmers. As he grew up, the country faced hard times. As America struggled through drought and the Great Depression, it wasn't long before McGovern came face to face with the issue of hunger right in his own backyard. In those days, in the early 1930s and on through that decade, we had a steady stream of young men coming to our door almost every day. There'd be one, two, or three of them. And they'd come to the door and knock and um, say, um, do you need to have your lawn mowed? Or do you need to have your snow shoveled if it was in the winter time? And in return for that, they expected a sandwich. My father always invited the men, if it was around mealtime, to eat with us. And they'd sit around the table, one, two, or three of them. And um, I realized that these were young men who were genuinely hungry. They were out of work. They were out here looking for jobs, maybe on the way to the West Coast from New Jersey or someplace. But uh, it gave me an appreciation early in my life uh, that people, even in this great country, in many cases uh, don't have uh, enough to eat. By age 22, a young McGovern was exposed to the realities of war. During his time with the Air Force in World War II, McGovern flew more than 35 missions through the skies of Italy, earning him the Distinguished Flying Cross. But the war wasn't the only life-changing encounter he had in Europe. A few feet over to one side, near a garbage dump, were young Italian mothers uh, scratching through the garbage looking for bits of food that they could take home to their children. That had a profound impact on me that um, gave me a new slant on what hunger and poverty uh, are all about. After the war, George McGovern returned to school at Dakota Wesleyan University. He soon became an active member of the Democratic Party and the voice of farmers everywhere. McGovern sought public office and was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1956. Following his election, McGovern mounted a campaign for the United States Senate in 1960, where he crossed paths with John F. Kennedy. It was through JFK that McGovern found another opportunity to make progress against the issue of hunger. I was running for the United States Senate, and he came out here to South Dakota to speak at the National Corn Picking Contest. He got up with a, with a um, manuscript. Somebody had written a speech for him. He didn't know an awful lot about agriculture, frankly. And whoever wrote the speech didn't do a very good job. Uh, he said, you know, George, I really blew that thing. What am I going to do when I get to Mitchell? And I said, well, the first thing you should do, Jack, is to throw that manuscript away. It's no good anyway. And why don't you just go out there and get up in front of those people and say, if I believe that the farmers of South Dakota and the Midwest can do more for the peace of the world than any other group of Americans. If we remember that our farm abundance is not a curse, it's a blessing, and we're going to use it to demonstrate that food can be health, food can be hope, food can be peace and strength to people around the world whose goodwill we seek. And if I'm elected president, I'm going to create a new office in the White House where I can keep an eye on it, and we're going to make a maximum effort to use this farm abundance to reduce hunger both in this country and around the world. And then sit down. But John Kennedy walked out there and he repeated that 
little message that I've just given you verbatim, and the place he exploded. People gave him a sustained operation. He couldn't, couldn't uh, uh, ovation. He couldn't quiet them down. Well, he won that election, and I lost. And guess who was the White House Food for Peace uh, director? <clears throat> The impression McGovern made would lead him to his post as the first director of President Kennedy's Food for Peace program and an instrumental player in the creation of the United Nations World Food Program. By 1962, McGovern was elected to the United States Senate, where he would serve the people of South Dakota for 18 years. During this time, McGovern had many impressive legislative achievements and even gained his party's nomination for president in 1972 but few of his achievements were more impressive than his work to help those who were without abundant and nutritious meals within the United States and around the world. McGovern found an unlikely ally in his fight against hunger, Kansas Senator Bob Dole. Despite great political risk, Senators Dole and McGovern partnered on the Food Stamp Act of 1964, school lunch programs, and the Senate Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs. Their partnership flourished, and in 2002, they both advocated for the McGovern-Dole Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program. Senator Dole later described Senator McGovern as a humble, compassionate, and caring man who always looked out for those in our society who needed a helping hand. His influence in fighting hunger extended far and wide, and our world is a better place because of his generous spirit. In 1998, Senator McGovern returned to public office as President Clinton's nominee to serve as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Agencies for Food and Agriculture, a post he held until he was appointed as the United Nations Global Ambassador on World Hunger by the World Food Program, the same program he had helped to create 40 years earlier. In 2011, Senator McGovern requested all of his memorial donations be given to the Feeding South Dakota organization. Since then, more than $90,000 has been contributed in his honor. McGovern's influence and passion for the issue of hunger was felt by all who interacted with him, especially his successor, Ambassador Tony Hall. A lot of people remember George McGovern because he ran for president, and of course he was against the Vietnam War, and he was very outspoken about that. But I really think his legacy is what he did for hungry people and his legislation and, and his passion. He stayed with this issue all his life. While reflecting on McGovern's life and contributions, his former legal counsel and friend, David Lambert, shared a poem to honor the legacy of George McGovern. Nutrition's architect and laureate for food, well-nourished minds, his lifelong passion's quest. That trembling tiny frames would be no more a fire with pain, but at each mealtime blessed with UN's gentle hand and nature's generous store. Then children dream sweet dreams, and he can rest that hunger on this earth would be no more. <laughs>